Hi, welcome to How to Repair. This video is on a dishwasher that is overfilling or constantly pumping out. We will show you how to diagnose the fault and to replace the faulty parts. We are working on a Bosch, but this video can be used for Barley, Constructor, Cooper Bosch, Neff, Siemens, Technic and many more models. Right, we've got the dishwasher on the test bench and it started to fill with water and after a while the check water light comes on and the machine is constantly filling and emptying at the same time. Now this is a good indication that the actual flow meter or impeller jug has gone faulty. It can also mean that the base of the machine where the electrics are is getting water into this compartment and therefore due to safety reasons the machine's safety switch floats and therefore pumps the water out of the machine to stop the machine actually flooding the electrical compartment. You can see me here showing you a simulation of the safety system being activated. The safety system can be activated by overfilling whereby the float inside the machine that I'm lifting here pumps out the water or there is a float in the base of the machine which will do the same job. I'll show you in more detail in a minute. Always remember before working on the machine disconnect it from the electricity supply for safety reasons. While I'm emptying the machine down before we turn it onto its back to take the base off, you will find some links above that will take you to the relevant components uh, that can fail on this. But this video is mainly about the float safety system and the flow meter or impeller jug. Remember, every machine does come apart differently. Uh, this one, the base comes off with two clips either side and it also has a couple of screws holding it in place. Some machines have a plastic solid base where you access the components through the side panels or through the front of the machine. Now this one is earthed uh, so you need to remove the earth strap. can be held on with a clip or a screw. Now we'll just take you through some of the components. This is the pump, this is the motor, then you've got the capacitor that drives the motor, the heating system which is one complete unit which comes with the heating element the timer and the NTC thermostat which is at the top just behind here you can see the wires leading to it uh, you can buy the NTC thermostat separately and your mains power supply comes in through the filter there and this is the base float switch now the electronic switch itself uh, does the job for the internal float and the base float and you can buy the complete unit if it goes down or faulty. You can check the electrical switch with a multimeter. It's a three-way switch so it's quite easy to check that you've got um, the contacts are working and if any water ever gets in the base that float at the bottom will activate the switch. Now we've got the water valve and this goes through to the flow meter which I showed you there. Now if you look carefully at the flow meter it has a directional arrow which means the water comes in on the right hand side, flows through to the left hand side and while doing so it turns a impeller which then measures the amount of water that goes into the machine. I will actually cut one apart in a minute, uh, but first we need to take the lid off. There's two screws at the back and two at the front on this model. And you need to use a flat blade screwdriver to prise the catch up on either side. You'll see me supporting the lid otherwise it keeps popping down. And once these have been suppressed you're able to take the lid off and now we need to remove the left hand panel again you can see the little catches here they can be quite tricky to get off and of course they slot in at the back so there's two screws on the front and one at the back on this model they're different type of screws uh, it's always worth keeping the screws in order as you take the machine apart that one was a short dumpy one with a fine thread which goes into a metal part of the casing and then the longer one with a coarser thread goes into the plastic. And 
Again, one at the back, which is a metal one. Now the side panel slides off sideways. Be very careful, there are sharp edges. And also it clips on at the bottom. You'll actually see some uh, lugs that hold it in place. Right, before we replace the flow meter, I'm just showing you what is actually happening. The machine, when you first start the machine, goes into empty mode three or four times to pump out any leftover water from the previous wash. Then the machine will click into fill mode, which I'll show you in a second. And as you can see, the machine is filling full of water. But what's actually happening is it is not stopping. It is constantly filling, emptying, and fill and empty. So basically, as the water rises inside the machine, the float switch is activated and it pumps out. Or if you have a leak and it's going into the bottom of the machine, again, the water that's gone into the bottom of the machine will activate and stay active the float switch. Uh, in other words, stopping any more water going in onto the electrics and therefore causing electrical problem. Now, this is the flow switch again. And as you can see, I've cut the top off the flow switch and you can see the impeller rotates as the water goes through. Now this is tucked down in the side here. We need to remove this top blue pipe and we've disconnected the hose from the machine and we need to remove the water valve. This is the easiest way to get it out. So be very careful as some of the plastic can be brittle. So take the top clip off first then ease the pipe delicately off the flow chamber plastic can sometimes be brittle. Right, next you can see where the water valve attaches to the hose that goes to your water tap. I've removed that already and with two flat blade screwdrivers you just need to depress the clip and prise it towards you and now we're able to remove the pipe including the flow switch and the solenoid Make sure always that you've uh, disconnected the electricity supply. And disconnect the wiring as you slide it out. Now the flow meter itself has a very delicate uh, clip that holds the wires in place. Be careful when doing this. Uh, make sure you don't pull any wires, even if you have to use some pin nose pliers to ease it out. As that... Uh, harness actually fits purposely into the flow pressure switch and if you damage it you've got a major problem of trying to get the connections back on. Now again as I said you need to make sure that you fit the flow switch correctly and that's by following the directional arrow or just replacing exactly as the old one comes off. Again just take the clips off and then ease the pipe off while I'm taking these pipes off, uh, you'll find links above if you're watching this on YouTube that will take you through to the full video guide tutorial or to the part itself if you need to purchase it. Um, or make sure you enter your full model number off the ID plate before purchasing. Uh, you need to make sure it fits. If you're unsure, feel free to email us as this part fits over two and a half thousand different models and makes of machines. Uh, so you really do need to make sure that it is the correct one for your appliance. Right, just getting the new one in. Now it's a good idea to just line all the pipes up so that it bends nicely the same way that it came off. And first thing we need to do is connect up the impeller jug or flow meter then guide it through get the wiring for the solenoid and replace that and now carefully guide the pipe up through and locate the two lugs that hold the solenoid plate 
into its location and when you push it back in you will clearly hear it click and you know you've done that correctly then replace the pipe again be cautious not to damage any of the plastic pipes put your clip back on now at this point we're going to connect the machine back up to the water supply and the electric and the machine is doing its normal uh, two three empties up to five sometimes uh, just to get rid of the excess water before it starts filling and when it starts filling you'll be able to make sure that the machine is actually activating the motor now in other words that the program knows that water is going into the machine and getting its correct level and then the motor will energize and you're also able to inspect your pipe work that there's no leaks on the machine at all and if there is any leaks disconnect it from the electricity immediately and then deal with whatever is leaking and as you can see here there we go the machine has actually activated the motor the program has activated the motor sorry and in a second or two the water will stop coming into the machine there you go now the motor will continue to run pumping the water around the dishwasher and occasionally you will see the pump activating this is just why the while the machine is working out its levels and there we go I hope you found this video helpful I hope you bought the part from us if that was the fault and if not you're always able to buy us a beer on the donate page all we need to do now is fit the side panel and again make sure that you get the lugs at the bottom on correctly and you put the screws back in the correct order the fine threaded ones go into the metal parts and the more coarser long ones go through the panel into the plastic make sure you always get the screws back in the right order as some of these are stainless steel and purposely designed so they do not corrode when uh, around water areas now we need to put the lid back on again you can see the two lugs that go to the back and they locate on their holes and then the lid will just slide down and clip into place and again replacing the screws these are the very long ones with a coarse thread and there's two at the back which we've already done now I'll just lean the appliance over to put the base plate back on and the float switch make sure that you actually get the float switch on correctly as it's a very important safety system you'll see there's two slots that sit over the actual uh, system and then replace the earth wire and then we'll just pop this up into place locating it into its slots and again they do vary from machine to machine some of them don't have screws in the bottom this one did and there we go we'll just put the machine on test so you can see it all working thank you very much for watching this video please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us at Facebook as that's what keeps us going and able to make these free videos for you and feel free to buy me a beer on the donate page if you've managed to fix your dishwasher thanks very much again for watching